Hello everyone and welcome back to the Lurking Shadow. Last time we got the Master Key, we met the Urchin. Unfortunately we can't interact with the Urchin, well you can interact with the Urchin, but we don't have the item we need to give him yet. So what we're going to do now is check out this crack here in the northwest corner. It's too tight tight to fit a ca carrying a metal flask, okay? So drop the flask. There we go. So, and we're in the tomb. This is a tiny, narrow, ill-fitting room. It appears to have been a leftover space from the joining of two pre-existing buildings. It is roughly coffin-shaped. The walls are covered by decades of overlaid graffiti, but there's one which is painted in huge resin letters that were apparently impossible for later artists to completely deface. On the floor is a rusty access hatch locked with a huge padlock. Right, good thing we have the master key, because master key is a true master key. Okay, so that doesn't work. It does open every lock in the game. That doesn't have like a like special thing for it. The lock, the rusting and willing, opens releasing the hatch. So it's essentially a super skeleton key, which I guess makes a certain amount of sense. Well, whatever. Let's open the hatch. And there we go. That, that was spooky. The hatch is heavy and its hinges are rusty. But you pull and strain it and it opens with a scream of metal. Revealed below is a rusty ladder leading down. Warm, fetid air calls up out of the manhole. There's a burnt and no smashed utility light set in the wall a few feet down. Okay. Sounds like a really good idea to go down there, so let's do it. The stark and grimy tunnel is largely filled with an imperfectly isolated steam pipe. The tunnel is uncomfortably hot and damp. You have gone from the Arctic to the tropics. The concrete tunnel has odd molds and fungi growing on its walls and ceiling and the floor is squishy. Torn clots of insulation litter the floor. Along the ceiling runs a thick tangle of coaxial cable. The tunnel leads east and west. A rusty metal ladder leads up. You can hear in the distance a chittering, scratching sounds. Those are rats. And we don't want to get killed by those. So let's just go east and see what awaits us here. The sound is louder. It sounds like small animals. Is it rats? Okay, we'll see. The sound continues. It's almost certainly rats. The red sounds are going louder, but you still can't see any rats. A troop of rats appears out of the darkness. The rats are momentarily startled by your presence. But soon the bolder ones begin to approach. There are more rats here than you have ever seen. Okay. We have to do something about that because those rats are going to kill us. You can't die in this game. And there's a number of... of ways to do so. There we go. The valve with a horrible screen of tortured metal gives a little and a small tickle of steam issues forth. This further agitates the rats. The rats attack. Slimy, snarling and hungry, they swarm over your feet, biting at your legs and clinging desperately at your feet. So let's try that again. The, the, the valve screeches open. A jet spray of live steam issues from it, filling the tunnel in front of you. The rats are caught in the full force of the blast. Horrible squeals can be heard from the midst of the steam cloud, and scalded rats charge past you, all interest in anything but flight forgotten. One of them remember remains dead. So this is a, a special way to to die. So there's a couple of, of general ways as well. The, the most common way to die is to step into darkness without the torch. If you do that, then you will almost always be immediately attacked and you will die. But anyway, so we've got, got a dead rat here. Now I don't think we need the dead rat. The steam tunnel is narrow here and its construction is more archaic. It's now mostly brick, also the floor is concrete. The steam pipe and coaxial cable continue along their pointed path. The tunnel is damp and even a little muddy. Okay, so that's good to know. So let's see what we have here. The steam pipe and coaxial cable turn upwards and disappear into the ceiling here. The tunnel itself comes to an end in a grimy, damp and dripping triad of crumbling brick walls. The south wall looks particularly decrepit, so that is interesting. So let's try what we can do here. Let's see what we can do here. We do have a crowbar. 
for a reason. Crowbar tends to be one of those. It's already open, okay. Really? So... Can we just go east again? Tunnel ends here. And dank dribbling brick wall. Okay. So let's try something else. Maybe it's just uh, the fray though. There we go. The wall grudgingly yields to your efforts. A brick. Less well mortared than its fellows pulls out of the wall. Okay, let's try that again. Thank you very much for including a repeat command here. The wall grudgingly yields to your efforts. So... Drops to the floor on the other side, making a hole through the wall. You can see a rusty steel reinforcing rod in the hole. Okay. So let's go... Let's go west in the steam tunnel. Actually... Hmm... Let's go east again. The broken brick here. So let's let's take the brick. You never know when we need that. Can we take the rods? That would never work, okay. That's interesting. Anyway, so let's head let's head back for a moment here. Steam tunnel, steam tunnel, there's a dead rat here. I don't think we need the dead rat. There we go, so let's get... Get that padlock. Because we do have the key for it. So you never need, know when you need that. There we go. The flask, I don't think we need actually need that. The game does have about 50% useful items and 50% less useful items. But they don't they don't always make it clear what you need. And some I items such as the such as the like the crowbar that's obviously useful and the torch, but they don't always explain you explain you what else you need. So actually maybe you know what, may, may, let, let's let's pick it up. So and let's go down and take the flask. Because you never know. There we go. So let's go down again. Oh, actually, oh, yeah. Go up because we came down. Here we go. Here we go. So we're back in the basement. Let's advance a little bit. Let's go up again. Aero lobby. This is the lobby of the aeronautical engineering building. Stairs lead down in the corridor, head south towards the main building. So let's go south. Infinite Corridor. The so-called Infinite Corridor runs from east to west in the main campus building. This is the west end. Slight corridors lead north and south, and, set of, and a set of doors lead the west into the Howling Blizzard. There's a plastic container here. There's a large machine being operated down the hall to the east. Okay, so that is interesting. So let's take the container, because you never know when you need that. You're holding too many things, you can't quite get them all arranged to take it as well. Okay. Let's, let's drop the brick, which we may have meant. Do we need the brick? So, can I actually get a command? Hmm. I think there's a command which shows you what items you have, but I may, may or may not need those. Let's actually drop the gloves. Oh, do we need the gloves? You know what, let's, let's drop the brick. If you do need it, we can always pick it up later. So let's take the container. There we go. I've got that now. And let's go east. So a maintenance man is here, walking, riding a floor walker. Okay, that's interesting. Time passes. Let's just wait a little bit. The floor walker walks us away to the east. A little more. Let's go east and follow. There's a wall socket on one wall and a heavy duty power cord is plugged into it. The cord leads to a large floor walker. Okay, so let's open our container here. You pull off the seal and open the container, revealing a smelly, vicious liquid. The floor walker walks away to the east. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. Let's be a little bit passive aggressive. Pours out and spreads like ants at a picnic. The floor is now covered from wall to wall with slippery floor wax. Let's wait a little bit. Time passes. You 
slip and slide on the walks. It's like you're, you're walking on wet ice. You can barely keep upright, but you manage to lose your belt in just the right way to keep going. A maintenance man is here riding the floor walker. There's a glass-fronted emergency cabinet here. The floor walker walks away to the east. Okay. Okay, so let's break the glass here. Bring the heavy gloves. You can't really smash the glass with a blow of your hands. Awesome. So, let's see. There's a formerly glass front emergency cabinet here. Your emergency cabinet contains a fire axe. That is awesome. That's what I want to have. So, you need the glass for that. The, the glass for that, I think. Oh, again, this, this again. So, I guess I can drop the container. Because I don't think I need it anymore. And let's take the axe. So. And let's go west a little bit. And there is there's a cable. Or the cord. Yeah, you, you, can, you can cut with the axe. The axe crashes against the floor and the power cord severs. The, the one of the floor walks are slow. And the maintenance man jerks to alertness. I'm not quite sure why I find this so funny. This is very passive aggressive and kind of mean. But, oh well. Let's wait a little bit. The, the maintenance man, growling and false sounding imprecations, descends from the floor, walks and heads towards you. The maintenance man lurches towards you with surprising speed. Just as he is about to grab you, he slips on the works. His hands uh, whips you inches from your throat and he drops to the floor, screaming in frustration. The maintenance man continues slipping, falling, standing, and so on. He reminds you of a badly made wind-up toy. Okay. So I'm not quite sure whether he ever stops doing that. So let's actually see whether he, he just continues to do that or not. <laughs> the maintenance man appears to short and almost dissolve. There's a great commotion, as though he's undergoing a convulsion of some sort, and then he appears to explode into a crowd of small squealing creatures. These seeing you scuttle off in the opposite direction and disappear. Yeah, to be honest, I'm not quite sure what's up with that. So the thing is, if you don't put the wax there, the guy's actually going to kill you. But I'm not quite sure what like, the meaning of this is, whether this guy was possessed, and even why is there a maintenance man made of small creatures, I, I really don't know. It's a bit bizarre, and they don't really comment on it. But anyway, let's go to the Great Dome. Okay, so we're again slipping on the walks, but that's fine, because we have mastered the art of walks walking. Here, walkway cycles the base of a huge ornate dome. Below is the infinite corridor. From stories of tech exploring trips, you recall that there's supposed to be a ladder here. On the other hand, there's a shiny rope-like thing hanging near where the ladder used to be and leaning upward. So, that sounds good. So let's climb up that rope. Oh, yeah, I should probably spell that correctly. The hand would help as well. The wet stuff on the strand sticks to the gloves but doesn't otherwise affect you. You have a little trouble climbing up the catwalk but grab the rail just before your strength gives out. You heave yourself up onto the catwalk. You stand up on the catwalk, catching your breath for a moment. Your eyes stray along the strand you climbed. It trails along the catwalk, where it joins something large and squishy squatting at the far side. A single bright blue eye opens in the squishy mess and the tentacle, for what that is, retracts. The mess almost flows through the spaces in the catwalk, roiling and drops to the floor 15 feet below. Before it can react, it's gone. Top of the dome. Inside the great dome, near the top, a metal catwalk is precautiously perched. There's no way further up, but a small metal door is set inside of the dome. Where the puppy mess was squatting, a wooden ladder lies on the catwalk. Yeah, this creature here, if you encounter it in the dark, it's going to attack and kill you. And you don't even get to know what killed you, it just says something grabs you, and you're dead. You can save in this game, but if you don't, then you have to do everything all over again, which can be uh, a little bit annoying. But that's okay. So let's just drop all our items here. The reason is that we have to take up the. We have to pick up the ladder. And if we don't, if you have too many items, in fact, I think we can only carry the ladder, and nothing else. But anyway, let's lower the ladder. 
There we go. You lower the ladder to the walkway below. It's just the right length to climb down. So, let's check out that metal door. You open the door, and freezing air, blowing snow, and howling wing enter and rip around you. So, let's get all. Do we actually want all? So, we do have the axe. We still need that. Padlock, knife, crowbar, flashlight, master key. Uh, smooth stone, assignments. Good. Okay, so. We don't need assignments. There we go. Yeah, I should probably spell it correctly. That would help. That's better. And I think we can actually drink the Coke. Delicious. Contains caffeine, one before basic food groups. Too bad they make it with fructose these days instead of sucrose. You feel much more alert and awake now. I think you need that at one point, but I'm not quite sure. I remember that I think you were supposed to take it, but I'm not quite sure. In any case, I think I can drop the Coke. No, I'm not quite sure if I have to drop the Coke after... Oh, there we go. So I do have an empty Coke bottle. So let's... Let's just uh, drop that here as well. And now we're on the roof of the Great Dome. You are perched precariously on the roof of the Great Dome. A set of narrow indentations in the dome provides a dangerous route to the very tip top of the dome. So that sounds like a pretty bad idea. So let's go there. On the Great Dome. You scramble up icy surface of the dome, almost slipping a few times, but finally you make it to the top. This is the very top of the Great Dome, a favorite place for tech fraternity to install cows, Volkswagen beetles, giant birthday candles, and other bizarre objects. The top is flat, round, and about five feet in di diameter. It's very windy, which has kept the snow from accumulating here. The only way off is down. In the exact center of the flat area is a bronze plug. Bitter, bone-cracking cold assaults you continuously. The temperature, bitter conditions are both terrible. I think if you stay outside too long, I think you... You, you die as well, but I think you have, to, you have to stay out here for a while. Let's take the plug. You pry the plug out of the socket, revealing a cylindrical hole about the same. Diameter, but somewhat deeper. There's a piece of paper in the hole. Okay, so let's drop the plug because we already have so many items. Let's take the paper. And let's spell that correctly. And let's leave. You can feel the cold warming its way through your layers of clothing and biting into your flesh. That's a warning message, so we have to get back inside. There's a two liter bottle of classic Coke in the side So did we actually drink two liters of Coke? That seems that seems excessive. It would be excessive if it's water. In fact, that probably would be pretty bad if it's water. Anyway, let's close the door because it's already cold enough. You close the door, shutting out the blizzard. So that's helpful. And... Actually, something here. So, take, can we drink more of the Coke? Let's see. Oh, yeah, so we can drink more. So, let's drink. Okay, so there we go. Thought so. So, maybe I guess they did take into account that it's unrealistic that you would just drink two liters of Coke in one gulp. But anyway, here we go. So, let's go down and down again. Let's go east east and we can now pass through here because we got rid of the guy and here we are at the chemistry building this corridor here is lined with closed dark offices at the south end of the corridor is a door with a light shining behind it there's something written on the door so that's that seems interesting mainly because because we're in the chemistry department now and apparently our term paper got corrupted by data from the Department of Alchemy, which of course isn't really chemistry, but I guess it's as close as it is. So, let's check out the door. Whoops, here we go. This is then a tech door. It's made of black painted wood and has a frosted glass window with Department of Alchemy knocked on it. There's a light on the inside. Okay, let's go in then. It's locked. Okay, hoo hoo. Okay, so let's see the master key does here really okay so I guess we knock 
them. So I guess the master key isn't so masterful, even though it can open a random padlock. You knock on the door. The hollow sound reverberates down the hall. You sort of wish you had knocked more softly. Well, let's see what something happens. Time passes. The door opens part way, revealing a professorial man with a white lab coat. He smiles. Good evening. I don't get many visitors this late. You are not one of my students, are you? He ushers you into the room without waiting for an answer, closing the door behind you. Department of Alchemy. This office is clinically clean, shiny and modern. It looks like something out of a science fiction movie. A closed door to the north leads back into the corridor and an archway opens to the south. Tape to the wall to the right of the archway is a sign-up sheet. The professor is here. Okay, so that's interesting. So let's actually read that paper, because we never quite did that. You unroll the piece of paper and read the shaky handwriting. I can no longer face what I've been doing. I can't sleep. I start at the slightest noise, and even dulling my sense with alcohol or drugs is no longer enough. I refuse to participate in what he's doing anymore. Either he is insane or I'm insane, or, and this is what I fear most, the universe itself is insane. I have only one final warning. I'm the only suicide, but I will not be the final death. The na name signed to it is oddly familiar. The professor gazed at you in a bored and distracted way. Oh well. So I think we're going to investigate what exactly is happening here next time. So thanks for watching and see you then.